Top 10 Most Cruel Animal Experiments from the Last 100 Years Number 10. Maryland Psychologist Severing Spinal Cords on Monkeys In 1958 to 1981, the Institute of Behavioral Research in Silver Spring thought it would be a great idea to give 17 monkeys paralysis. Led by the psychologist and animal experimenter Edward Taub, they would hold 17 monkeys in cramped wired cages where they had to sit and wallow in their own feces. But it would only get worse for the monkeys because the experiments would proceed as follows. Taub would sever the spinal nerves of a monkey which resulted in the loss of function in one or more of their limbs. Then he would electrocute or pinch the monkeys to see if they were able to regain movement of that paralyzed limb. And the funniest thing about this is that he never received medical or veterinary in training to do this. He's like those weird kids that once they see a dead or hurt animal, immediately start poking it with a stick or kicking it around. He did this to study neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to adapt after injury. And he was particularly interested in the mechanisms of motor recovery and rehabilitation following nerve damage. Luckily, he didn't just do this for fun because his work contributed to the development of constraint-induced movement therapy, a method used in stroke rehabilitation. Sadly for Todd though, his fun would be cut short when PETA would launch an investigation on him and his experiments, leading him to be the first animal experimenter to ever be tried and convicted for animal cruelty, the first confiscation of abused animals from a laboratory, and the first US Supreme Court victory for animals used in experiments. If this was the animal cruelty the Olympics, he would be Michael Phelps. Number 9. Injecting Horses with Snake Venom now, who would inject horses with snake venom, you may ask, and isn't the answer obvious? It was and currently is Pfizer Laboratories, where they started these experiments in 1961 to produce anti-venom to treat snake bite victims. They would do this by injecting them with increasing doses of snake venom over a period of time, which would stimulate their immune systems to produce antibodies against the venom. Then, large quantities of blood would be drawn from the horses periodically to extract the plasma, which contains the antibodies needed to make the anti-venom. And as you would expect, this causes the horse significant stress and health issues, including illness, weight loss, and anemia, because the horses typically are not provided with pain relief. You know, because that would just be too expensive for Pfizer. They have done this procedure to what is believed to be more than a hundred horses, and that number is only increasing because no one wants to be bitten by a snake, and especially by a snake that we don't have a cure for yet. So, sorry PETA, but you're gonna have to take the L on this one. Number 8. Government Experimenter Inflicts Permanent Brain Damage on Monkeys The National Institute of Health's Elizabeth Murray must be a massive ghetto fan because she really does hate those monkeys. Carving out a section of a monkey's skull and then injecting toxins into the brain or suctioning out a portion of it, she aimed to cause permanent and traumatic damage to the monkeys. In order to further study the neural mechanisms underlying emotions, cognition, and behavior. After making the already dumb monkeys into vegetables, she would then place the monkeys into a small metal cage, where a guillotine-like door at the front of the cage is suddenly raised, revealing realistic-looking fake spiders or snakes, which are inherently frightening to monkeys, and the animals would have to endure this torture over and over and over again. And once Murray finished subjugating these poor creatures to cruel amounts of torment, she would either off them or recycle them like a bottle of coke into oh another experiment. And you wanna know what this cartoon villain got for doing this? Absolutely nothing, because she started doing this in 1983 and is still doing it to this day. But it's not all bad, because her research is used to inform us about treatments for mental health conditions such as anxiety disorders, depression, and PTSD. Number 7. Sensory Deprivation Experiments on Baby Monkeys Margaret Livingstone began her evil experimentations in 1983, and those experiments consisted of tearing baby monkeys away from their mothers and sewing their eyeballs shut, or ensuring they never see a human or monkey's face in their life. She did this to better understand the development of the visual system in primates by studying the effects of visual deprivation on brain development and processing. Man, I guess all these evil scientists are ghetto fans. Anyway, as you could probably guess, a lot of people do not like her or her experiments. And they all call for the closure of her lab, but Livingstone claims that the research is necessary for advancing neuroscience and has potential applications in treating visual and neurological disorders. And her arguments must be working because her lab is still running, but I bet it's one of the scariest places on planet Earth. <sighs> hey there, Bongo. Number 6. Organ Experimenter Killed and Cut Open Pregnant Monkeys 
and I bet your reaction was about the same as mine. Kevin Grove at the Oregon National Primate Research Center conducted multiple of one of the most cruel and unusual experiments in history from 1997 to 2017. Grove confined female monkeys to cramped cages and fed them unhealthy, high-fat diets until they became obese, after which they were artificially inseminated. Then, some of these pregnant monkeys were killed, their brains and fetuses removed and examined, but those who did give birth had their newborns taken away almost immediately, traumatizing both the mother and the baby. The primary goal of Grove's research was to understand how a high-fat diet and obesity in pregnant monkeys impact the development and health of their offspring. Aiming to shed light on the intergenerational effects of obesity in humans, rightfully so, animal rights organizations were able to shut down the lab and prevent such experiments from ever happening again. I swear, these scientists are just a bunch of maniacs using the name of science as an excuse to vent out their anger on animals. My wife just divorced me, Pongo. You know what that means. <laughs> Number 5. Columbia Experimenter Cuts Baboon's Eyes Out to Induce Strokes Okay, no, but seriously, what did monkeys ever do to us? Anyways, in experiments conducted at Columbia University from 2001 and 2011, researchers at the university would cut out baboons' eyes, sometimes while they were still conscious, and clamp the arteries to their brains to induce strokes. The primary goal was to study the mechanisms of strokes and potential treatments. Look, my grandma had a stroke once, and I did not see this research ever being implemented into her treatment, so I can only assume they did this for the poops and laughter. But their laughter would be cut short because animal advocacy groups would protest and shut down their experiments. Now I need to ask, who the hell is giving these people jobs? Number 4. Animals beheaded with kitchen scissors in UNC experiments. Luckily, this experiment did not go on for long but it still went on for more than it ever should have. This idea should have been dropped the moment it was pitched. Starting in 2001 and ending in 2003, the University of North Carolina would allow researchers to give mice and rats alcohol, dopamine, and nicotine, where they would then decapitate them with scissors and extract their brains to study the effects that these substances have on it and their behavior to further understand addiction mechanisms and potential treatments. And over the course of their experiments, various reports have highlighted issues such as inadequately gassed or improperly euthanized mice and rats being found alive in a cooler meant for dead animals. Additionally, an experimenter admitted to not numbing young rats with ice before decapitating them with scissors to remove their brains. Luckily, animal rights organizations again ended the researchers' fun and called for the complete shutdown of their studies. Number 3. Johns Hopkins Experimenter Cuts Into Owl Skulls Cherish Mysore, a neuroscientist at Johns Hopkins University, conducted controversial experiments on owls, cutting into their skulls to expose their brains and attaching electrodes to their heads. In an effort to study neural mechanisms underlying attention and sensory processing, now this guy is truly a copy and paste of like a Teen Titans Go villain. After the probes were attached, the owls were then placed in small confined tubes and then subjugated to intense lights and sounds. This process often resulted in severe brain damage that the owls became unusable, at which point their yearly life subscriptions were left unpaid and they were taken off the census. I'm not gonna lie, the more I researched this topic, the more I felt like becoming a vegan, but I'm a servant of the Lord, so I'm gonna be honest, that is never going to happen. The 10% black in me won't allow me to give up chicken. Number 2. University Experimenter Traps Birds, Wounds Them, and Does Much Worse this is why I'm not going to university, because at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they kicked puppies around in the name of science. Christine Latin, a researcher now at LSU and previously at Tufts and Yale universities, worked to understand the physiological and behavioral responses of birds in stress. At Tufts and Yale, Christine injected sparrows and other birds with chemicals to destroy their adrenal glands, used a biopsy punch to inflict painful wounds on their legs, and fed the sparrows food laced with crude oil to study the environmental contamination effects. Like holy damn brother, are you gonna shove a stick in their cheeks too? Because I feel like you would only need one of those things to happen for a bird to feel stressed. But the worst thing about this is that she did all that at Tufts and Yale and still got hired by LSU, where she would then capture banned and fit sparrows with digital ID transmitters. Then she would let them go and at the end of the breeding season recapture and kill all the birds with their newborn chicks to analyze their brains. Through the supervillain title, she should get her own cameo in the Berserk or Monster anime. If we had another Salem Witch Trials, I know who I would send there first. 
Number 1. Liberty Research Workers Drill Holes Into Young Beagle Skulls You know how I said I wouldn't be surprised if scientists started to kick puppies around for the advancement of human technology? Well, I was surprised to learn that we are now drilling holes into puppies' heads. In 2017, PETA launched an investigation into Liberty Research Incorporated, a laboratory in New York, where they exposed experiments being performed on young beagles. What they discovered was that workers drilled holes into the skulls of these dogs to inject the distemper virus directly into their brains. The inadequate anesthesia resulted in the dogs whimpering during the procedure, crying and showing signs of severe pain. And some dogs even banged their heads on cage walls, causing blood to spurt out from their wounds, while others foamed at the mouth and had seizures. They were also left to suffer without apparent treatment and were ultimately killed at the end of the study. Look, I'm Asian, but I can still feel bad for my food, and even if I could find the reason for this experiment to happen, I'm sure it still wouldn't be good enough. It's pretty sad to see all these animals suffer fates like this at the hands of humans, and it sucks even more that most of these experiments actually helped improve modern medicine. So I can't even be that mad, since I would save a good human over a good dog any day of the week, so sorry PETA, but thanks for the list. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in another episode.